is the first song that I ever listened to of music that Trevor Str- Sternad ever recommended to me. I love this song. The band is called Scarlet. The song is called Obsolete. Off of a record called This Was Always Meant to Fall Apart. So good. I tell you what, I uh, I must have listened to this song 500 times. Love this song. The rest of the records kind of converge, Dillinger Escape Plan kind of vibe. So really good. But this song, over and over again. And I used to go into, uh, it actually played a big role in the blackening. Cool drum beat. Check that out. The, uh, Every day, you know, I'd go in to warm up when I was doing the guitars on the blackening. A lot of guitars. <laughs> it felt like I was in there for fucking ever, tracking all the guitars. And, uh, the, uh, you know, I'd just play a couple, I'd just play music just to get warmed up. You know, I'd just play songs. And, uh, I was listening a lot to, Every time I die, gutter phenomenon. And for some reason, when I wanted to get into party mode, I'd put on Gold Digger by Kanye West. <laughs> and then I'd put on uh, this song, Scarlet, Obsolete. And this song, I, this song, even now, just listening to it, like it's like it hypnotizes me, man. Like it just, I'm fucking completely hypnotized by it. And uh, Trevor told me about this band. He was, we went out, uh, first of all, let me, before I get started on all that, um, Trevor passed away very shockingly yesterday. Um, I did, uh, I had already done my intro for the podcast that I have coming up with Craig LoCicero. And I just, felt the need to kind of talk about my friend and you know before I get going I don't I don't want to make it look like Trevor and I were best of friends or anything you know we were definitely not best of friends we were friends um we toured together a couple times um had crossed paths on festivals and many times and he was always a cool dude um But yeah, you know, this isn't like, oh my God, he was my best bro, you know, so don't misinterpret that. Um, some of you may feel that this is too soon. Personally, I feel that, you know, and I know when, I, when, when Joey Jordanson passed away last year, I did one. It was like, too soon, man. I'm like, I, this is when we, we need to talk about it. Like, <laughs> when we're all reeling from this, you know, this is when we share our stories and we talk about the good things and you know our memories and and so uh you know I don't know why but I was really affected by this more than I thought I would be and uh you know maybe it's because I just saw him not that long ago maybe it's because of the way I believe that he went um kind of bringing up my own baggage with myself but it really like I've just been like 
all yesterday, all day today. I've just been on the verge of fucking tears, man. You know, I was talking to my friend Tom. I'm just texting back and forth, and was, he re-listened to the, you know, I just had Trevor on the podcast not even, you know, eight months ago. And, uh, you know, he was listening to it, and he re-listened to it, I should say, and, you know, something that he said, you know, something that he said really resonated with him. You know, he said, Trevor said, I should say. He said, went back and watched, listened to your interview with him. He was the first person I ever heard say what I've felt for some time now. And what he said was, how can something as silly or whatever, like metal, distract you from what a horrible world we live in? How can metal distract you from what a horrible, horrible world we live in? And I and at first I didn't understand what the what the context was, so I asked him, "Did he mean it like he was glad for the distraction?" And my buddy Tom said, "No, he meant it as if it wasn't enough." You know, and then we just continued texting, and you know, I'm not going to talk about what the rest of the conversation was, but. You know, a lot of it had to do with just uh, our own baggage when it came to suicide. You know, and that's being that's me being presumptuous that that's how he passed away. But, you know, in the official post by Black Dahlia murder, they did put a suicide prevention phone number at the bottom. And, uh Yeah. You know, it just brought up all that shit. I'm thinking about that. And such a nice guy, man. Like, a really, like, just a lovable, genuinely nice dude. Really into metal. Like, so into metal. Like, more into metal than I am. <laughs> like, I'm, I'll be totally honest. Like he was way more into metal than I am. You know, I love metal, but that dude, like, you know, he was still every day going down demo bands, rabbit holes, and I was like, fuck, you're nuts. And, you know, he's got a little more free time. I've got two kids to raise, and, you know, I don't have as much time to do stuff like I used to. But, uh, you know, the, the, the metal community couldn't have asked for a metal, better metal ambassador. And, uh, you know, so I figured I'd just jump on here. This is just kind of a standalone intro that I'm just going to put up as is, and it can live separate from the podcast that I'm dropping tonight. And, uh, I'll just tell, tell some, a handful of stories of the time the dude and I crossed paths, which wasn't a lot in the beginning, to be fair. Probably I've pro I've talked to Trevor more in the last nine months since the podcast than I've ever talked to the dude in my whole life. Um, you know, and and that podcast, you know, he was he was so open, man. You know, he was really struggling with depression, and he had a uh, he had done an interview with Frank from Metal Injection. And uh, I, had, I had listened to that prior to having him on my podcast. And it was really, I mean, it was fantastic. If you go and, you know, like, you got to go listen to it right now. Like, it's, it, even before all this, it was one of the best interviews I've ever heard with anybody. You know, and both of them were, you know, they're, they were fr they're fr good friends, so that helped the, the dynamic and it helped the way that the interview flowed. And, you know, I think Frank was going some, some stuff at his, at his time. And so they were both like very open about it. And, and, uh, yeah, it was just, it was heavy. It was really heavy, you know, and, you know, he was 
really open about how he was, had been struggling with depression. The pandemic was really hard. You know, Blabbermouth's got a bunch of quotes up right now about it. And, uh, I mean, almost, you know, a huge portion of text from that interview. He is up on Blabbermouth right now talking about how he was feeling. And, and you know, I talked to him probably three months later. And so uh, he seemed like he was in such a better place, man. You know, he seemed like he was just in a lot better place in only three months. And uh, yeah, that interview's still up, by the way. You can go check it out on my YouTube page, and I'll include a link to the metal injection uh, interview to somewhere here, there in the description. I don't know where. Um, I met Trevor back in mid two thousands. Hazy, not clear. Exactly. All, all I remember <laughs> the cities, the year, it's all a blur, but I know it was on through the ashes. It was somewhere on the Through the Ashes tour. And they were on tour, I believe, with Cannibal Corpse. And uh, we went to the show. We had a day off, and then we were playing the same venue the next day as Cannibal Corpse and Black Dahlia. And uh, we went. We got to the show. We caught Black Dahlia and uh, caught Cannibal Corpse. And it was a wild show. It was Steve-O was there. Like, just totally randomly, Steve-O from Jackass was there. Fucking shit shit faced <laughs> like annihilated high on pills and co- who knows what but he was <laughs> he was doing handstands and walking down staircases like while doing a handstand like oh my god it was fucking i've never seen anybody do it something like this it was crazy and he was wasted like just fucking plastered and uh so this is a very memorable show and then uh we went and we municipal way. Maybe I'm mixing. I I could be mixing up my shows too. Like sometimes just things start to blur together. But uh, M- municipal waste was playing at a small club, like a bar almost down down the road, pretty close by though. Close enough for all to just cab over there. And so we cabbed over there, and Trevor was th- Trevor came with us. And, uh, we were, we were already drunk from hanging out at the cannibal show. And then we went to municipal waste, which is just a giant party anyway. And, uh, (laughs) at one point I ordered a bunch of shots and I brought them like on a tray up to the stage and we all did shot like while they were playing and like in between songs. And, uh, yeah, it was nuts. And I had, uh, I had, uh, we just ended up drinking and talking, you know, Trevor, you know, we went back to the bar and we're hanging out, just waiting for everybody to come out. And uh, Trevor and I were talking and he had this hot chick hanging all over him, hot, like ridiculously hot chick hanging all over him. And, and all he did was talk to me. He like just kind of blew this chick off and, you know, was talking to me and uh, not to blow her off, but like, you know, just spending a lot of time, you know, and uh, and we were just talking metal and music and how the tour was doing and this that and the other thing and and uh, and then he turned me on to he turned me on to a band called I want to say it was called The Ocean or Ocean, um, which I checked out and I was like yeah pretty cool, but then that Scarlet band he turned me on to then, so this is before the Blackening, you know so two thousand five or whatever, and. Uh, Somewhere, maybe two thousand. I couldn't tell you. Like some mid two thousands, before the blackening. That's all I can remember. Because I heard of the band because of him, and then I'm listening to this band while we're recording the blackening, like every fucking day. And uh, yeah, he uh, he was just a super cool dude, man. Like just a really fucking funny and witty and nice dude. Very nerdy, you know, and I, I relate to that, you know, for all the, 
the image that Machine Head has had throughout the years, you know, like, I, you know, I'm a, I was, I'm a metal nerd. You know, like I started off as a Star Wars nerd and then I became an anime nerd and then I became a metal nerd. <laughs> you, know, and, you know, to me, the people that last in this business, in the music business, is because they're kind of that. You know, because they're kind of a nerd that obsesses over some fucking band or a thing or a movie or whatever, a lifestyle and kind of becomes part of the culture of it. And so I I connected to him on that level. And, uh, and then I didn't see him for a while. You know, I, I don't, we, we toured together on, uh, sounds of the underground, but you know, it's just, it was a weird tour and didn't really, you know, it was always just chaotic, like hanging out with anybody. And, and, uh, you know, Trivium was on that tour and we barely hung out with Trivium because it was just such a chaotic tour, like no dressing, like it was just always random, you know, no dressing rooms. Everybody's just on their buses or their vans or whatever. And, uh, Behemoth was on that tour. And, uh, Cannibal was on that tour. And, yeah. Um, Anyway, we we didn't talk for a long time. Literally for probably another seven years we didn't cross paths. Five years or six years, I don't know. And then uh, we ended up doing the, we did a tour together in 2012. And... And we, you know, I don't know why, but we didn't really, that was the tour where I was like, fucking, I got, I had a hernia, like the fucking, I got the fucking Disney kicked us off the fucking shit. Like it was just a K for machine head. It was like one of the most disastrous tours. I think we, we've ever done. Like we missed half the tour because of this, that bus breaking down every three days. We were missing shows. Like it was a fucking catastrophe. And, uh. I mean, in fact, my my most clear memory of hanging out with anybody from Black Dahlia was hanging out with uh, Brian, the guitar player, because we all went to Rush. I got I had a friend who was working for the band Rush, and we went on. Rush was playing right next door to where we were playing, and so we all went over to Rush and watched Rush. And I don't even think Trevor went. I think it was just all the other guys, and uh, yeah. And then you know the next time, you know we we talk here and there on you know dms or whatever instagram but then he hit me up right before their tour and was like hey man i'd love to be on the podcast and i was just like oh dude yeah fuck yeah let's do it and um and you know it's in a lot of ways man like that's what i love about doing the podcast it's like for all of the you know tour stories and stuff you know like you could tour you could tour with a band i've to- most of the bands i've toured with i've barely you know hung out with you know like you just don't hang out with the ba- with bands as much as you think you would and uh certainly don't have the type of you know there's always people around you're never going to really get into some deep discussion I and mean, it's mostly just partying and raging and i rah and uh you know it was really great having him on the podcast you know, he just, uh, you know, he really just opened up and, you know, he was talking about, you know, how hard it was, was dealing with his depression and, you know, as someone who's also dealt with depression, written many songs about it, sang about it, you know, it, it really hit home for me and, you know, I was, I was, I was concerned for him that he was like, you know, doing the the ketamine therapy. I don't know anything about ketamine therapy. I'd never even heard of ketamine therapy until, you know, fucking I heard him talking about it. And then I still don't really know what it is. So I can't offer like an opinion if it's good or bad. But I was like, um, ket- ketamine's like what I used to do. With- ketamine's like elephant tranquilizer, <laughs> if you don't know. I used to snort ketamine with the vision of disorder guys <laughs> every time we came through New York City back in the late 90s. And fucking, you know, like it literally paralyzes you <laughs> like you're, you'd be i have a clear memory of being in a bar in manhattan leaning up against the fucking mirror of the wall and just like 
being <laughs> just seeing all these fucking disco ball lights at the bar reflecting on it and not being like paralyzed. I couldn't fucking move. I was like, Jesus Christ, like if somebody wanted to rob me right now, <laughs> fucking beat the shit out of me, like I couldn't do anything. So when I heard that that was a therapy, I was like, wow, that's wild because I don't know if, uh, yeah. And then, you know, believe it or not, like after the paralyzation wears off, you can then continue to snort it and it just gets you really fucking wildly high. And it's the trippiest high where you're like, oh, my God, I am walking on air. <laughs> it's just a trippy high. Yes, spent many a ketamine night in the East Coast. And uh, with VOD, that hardcore band VOD. And, uh, but I was just like, I don't know, is that the right, you know, like, is that what you should be doing right now? Like, that's kind of crazy. Like, you know, he had been, he had gotten sober and then he'd, you know, kind of going back and forth and, but yeah, he really, you know, he really broke it down and, you know, when I ended the interview, I was you know, I was concerned for him during the interview, but I, you know, at the end of it, it was just like, fuck, I'm just, I'm glad that you're doing better. And, you know, it sounds like you're in a lot better place and that I'm happy for you. And, you know, it makes me happy to hear that. And, and uh, yeah. And then they came through town just like three weeks later and we hung out there, you know, he got, got me into the show, like, you know, Fucking hung out before the show, hung out after the show, and and uh, it was a good time. Like, it was a fucking great time. He wasn't, you know, normally, you know, normally when bands come to the Bay Area, a lot of people don't know this, but, you know, when it goes, because it's California, so they go Bay Area show, and then the next show is Los Angeles. So, seven times out of ten, nobody wants to party after the Bay Area show, because it's L.A. the next day, like a big suit the label you know the record label's probably going to be there managers are probably going to be you know it's always like a big thing like that and so i always ask like hey you know if you're not like i get it if you don't want to party it's cool but uh and he was like yeah i don't know man like big show tomorrow and you know they were headlining and i was like i get it bro like it's all good like i don't like i can just hang you know we can just talk and met the guitar player Brandon, fucking awesome guitar player, Jesus, fucking sick. And uh, yeah, and then and then his mom passed away. You know, you know. I tell you what, though, when we were hanging out, he was he was asking me how the response to the podcast was, and I was like, dude. Everybody was just like blown away, like, oh my God, he's the nicest guy ever. <laughs> like, seriously, everybody was just so fucking, oh my God, I love that guy. You know, like, and he was stoked. He was stoked on that. He was really just like, I remember he gave me a look. He was just like, <laughs> he put his arms out. He's like, I'm like, you're a fucking lovable guy. What the fuck? <laughs> you are. And, uh, yeah, so he's stoked. And then, and that was it. And then, you know, we just kind of DM back and forth a little bit after that. And then we texted. And, and then just a couple months back, he was, he posted about his mom passing away. And that he was having a hard time with it. And I reached out to him. and was just like, hey, you know, I, my mom just passed away too. And, uh, you know, if you ever need more to talk about it or whatever, you know, it's been you know, there's a lot of feelings that go along with it, and, you know, that's it, and he was like, oh, I'm good, man, I was like, I'm doing good, and I was like, oh, great, I was like, that's cool, and, you know, that's just kind of like, that's like dudes, that's just total dude shit right there, you know, like, oh, I'm fine, I'm, I'm, I'm doing good, you know, like, even if you're not doing good, you just tell another dude, like, oh, I'm doing good, you know, that's like what dudes do. <laughs> dudes will not talk about shit for fucking ever, right? Like, dudes can not. Oh, I forgot to turn my lights on. Boom. 
dudes cannot talk about shit. They can just not talk about things that are important <laughs> forever to their detriment. And that was the last time I spoke with him. And and then I saw the news and yesterday. Bunch of, I, well, you know what? And I tell you what, I hate, I hate this. Like when you open up your phone and there's like 12 texts from 12 different people. And I'm like, who is this? What happened? What's happened? What happened? You know, and it's like, you know, like, it's like, I dread that. And, you know, I got a couple of buddies who I feel that way about. I'm not going to name any names. I know a couple of people, though, who do seem like they're self-medicating and do seem like they're getting a little out of hand. And, you know, I hope that they're doing okay. You know, I wish I would have reached out to him. I wish I would have, like, maybe, you know, you'd like, you always think about, like, what you could have done, right? Like, you know, it's crazy. I was going to ask him to help me help me with some lyrics on this new album. And I thought about it a couple times, and I fucking, I just didn't. You know, like, I was just like, ah, he's going to think this is cheesy or fucking you know he's not going to dig it and you know cause he's a great lyricist man really good lyricist great smart fucking clever use of words like killer rhymes and he's got a song called Christ Deformed dude fucking go pull up the lyrics on that shit fucking brutal it's about the Catholic Church and fucking molesting kids. Oh, it's fucking savage. And it's so well, it's so well put together. You know, a song that should be fucking, you know, a subject matter that could very much be comical, you know, if you wanted to just get all stupid about it. But he just fucking shredded the Catholic Church. It was brutal. And it's so fucking, like, I remember reading that just back in the day and be like, oh, my God, this is fucking amazing. And the balls, <laughs> the fucking balls to do it was just like fucking hell. You know, and I thought, I was like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I should send him to him. Like, he could probably help me. You know, I just wanted, I just wanted to have an idea. I just wanted to go, hey. What do you think of this? Does this line suck? I'm fucking, I've rewritten this song 20 fucking times now. Like, I, <laughs> I just wanted to bounce an idea off somebody and, and, you know, other than Jared or whoever. And and then I just didn't. And I don't know why. I just thought, you know, I was just insecure about it. Like, I was just like, oh, he's going to think we're not cool or something. Fucking, and he probably would have been stoked to do it. And, and I feel so stupid not doing that now. I feel so dumb that I didn't do that because he probably would have been into it. And I never even told him that. I never even told him this. I did get a chance to tell him how much that Scarlet song influenced me, though. I told him on the podcast. And I think I got the I think I got the band wrong, but I, but I told them how much that song I was like I fucking it literally changed the blackening. Like I it just opened my mind up to so another possibility that could happen. And I was really grateful that I got to tell them that. I was really grateful I got to say that to him, to his face. You know, sometimes you go through a whole lifetime and. You know, you wish you would have said this to that person and then, you know, the next thing you know, that person's taken away. I was really glad I got to say that. Now he's a fucking beast of a front man. Like, just fucking sick. 
killer voice. You know. They killed it at that show. They just fucking killed it. You know, he changed. He affected a lot of people, man. If you get a chance, go check out Frank Godla from Metal Injections Instagram post, who's really sad. You know, those guys, those guys were pretty close. And he's gutted. He's just fucking gutted. Yeah. As I'm sure his family is. I'm sure his band is. And his brothers. His girlfriend. All of his fans. You know, even people in the music com- in the metal community. You know, everybody's just pretty stunned. And, you know, like I said in the beginning, it just brought up all my own baggage. You know, I've actually attempted suicide at one point. Slipped my wrists. You know, why do you think I wear all these bracelets all the time? I don't want to look at it. I don't want to see the scars. And I lived. You know, I OD'd on heroin and I lived. And I've driven 120 miles an hour on the freeway, fucking blasted drunk out of my mind. I hope I fucking hit another car. I hope I fucking crash into a pole. And I lived. You know, I get his darkness. I get the place he was in. And I guess that's what, and that's what's the hardest part, you know, for me. It's like I relate to it more than I want to. I don't want to relate to it. But I do. And I guess that's that scares me. You know, and I don't feel like that now. But, you know, like it just brings up all those feelings. Yeah, by the way, don't take acid and then watch The Omen (laughs) 2. You'll find yourself in the bathroom. Fucking, uh, (laughs) the worst movie I could ever watch while frying on acid. But, you know, obviously it wasn't, it's more than that that leads you to do something like that. And, uh, you know, it was a long time ago, but it's still just, that baggage gets brought up, man. But man, what a guy. What a fucking performer. Yeah, go check out the lyrics to Christ Deformed. Go check out Black Dahlia Murder. Go watch some videos, some live videos. If you're a fan of his, listen to that podcast. Listen to the Metal Injection podcast. Listen to my podcast. It fucking really goes deep, man. Really deep. And you know, he he was a fan of all music, man. Too. You know, as much as he was a metal ambassador, for sure. He's a huge Mo fan, Motown fan. He talked about that on my podcast. He's a big Motown fan. You know, he's like, when I just need a break from metal and I just want to kind of get the party started, like, put on some fucking Motown. And I'm like, yes, that's fucking rad. I was <laughs> like, that's awesome. I love Motown. All that old shit. Old funk. It was called R and B back then. Old R and B. Let's go to the Motown. Nah, if I play Motown, I'll probably get a fucking copyright strike. Fuck that. I'm not gonna do that. 
Yeah, I don't know. That's all I got to say. Like I said, I'm not trying to make it look like Trevor and I were best friends. We're not. We weren't. You know, our lives intertwined. We crossed paths more than a few times, and we had some great hangs. You know, that, that bar, the fucking bar. Um, the, the bar, the bar hang was probably the craziest hang. You know, like we got fucking annihilated. He actually, at one point, he talked about this too. At one point, he threw up on the bar. <laughs> like, after we were doing shots galore. Like, and he threw up on the bar and then just kept on drinking. <laughs> He's like, made some room. <laughs> uh, that's probably my fucking best memory of him. Just fucking too funny. I laughed my fucking ass off. Yeah. That's probably my best memory of him. <laughs> just threw up on the bar, kept drinking, ordered more shots. <laughs> I'm surprised the bartender didn't just like, you're cut off, get the fuck out. <laughs> nope, he just cleaned it up and like, okay, more shots. <laughs> yeah, what a night. I was so hungover the next day. Oh my God, <laughs> I was just fucking wrecked. Anyway. I'll end it on that note. I'll end it on that note. And then I'll go back and I'll play that song that Trevor turned me on to that I love so much. But uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Play some Black Dahlia Murder extra loud today. Remember the good times. Remember the shows. Remember everything that he brought to the world. And thanks for coming into my life, Trevor. <laughs> <laughs>